Hey, hey, magandang umaga sa bawat isa. Welcome to Season of Taytay. Ito po ang ating second service. Nagagala ko po makasama kayo. I'm so excited to share God's message this morning. How about you? Excited po ba tayo na marinig ang salita ng Panginoon? Sa kabila po ng malamig at muulan na panahon, I praise God dahil po tayo pulong-pulo. At tama po yung ating desisyon na tayo po yung magtag. Dito po sa CCF Taytay. Okay, so our topic today, are you ready? Yes. Our topic today is Practice Radical Love. Turn to your neighbor, sabi mo sa katabi mo, Practice Radical Love. Yeah. Again, everybody, CCF Taytay, what's our message today, go? Parang 40% lang po yung kumukun. Pwede po ba 100%? Okay, everybody, all together please. What's our message today? Practice radical love. Much better. So right now, we're going to talk about how to love radically. And I believe that our message today is very important in our Christian faith. Because the God whom we serve, whom we worship, is a God of love. And kung ang Diyos mo natin ay Diyos ng pag-ibig, then we also should love one another. Tama mo ba? Again, practice radical love. Before anything else, tayo po muna ay yumukot, nalalangin. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, we praise you once again for this morning, for this time, and again po sa amin. And uh, Lord, I pray, Panginoon, that you uh, fulfill your, your work, your purpose sa hapon na ito, Panginoon. Fill me with your spirit, override my preparations, Panginoon. I acknowledge my total dependence upon you. And Lord, I pray na uh, ihanda po po sa isipan ng bawat isa. Ikaw po ang mangusap sa aming puso. Punoy mo po ang lugar na ito ng yung presensya, Panginoon. And we rebuke the work of the enemy, O God. We praise you, Father. I pray that the name of Jesus will be exalted, will be magnified, and be glorified. Amen. Lahat ng ito ay binabalik namin sa Panginoon sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Practice radical love. Ano po naisip natin every time we hear these words? Practice radical love or to love radically. Alam po ninyo, isa po sa naisip ko, every time narinig ko po ito mga salitang practice radical love, is the radical love of Jesus. Tama po ba? Tuwing naisip ko po ito, naisip ko po na alala ko po yung sacrifice na ginawa ng Panginoong Asok Kristo sa Cruz. Ano po ba yung sacrifice ng Panginoong Asok Kristo? Jesus Christ died on the cross to cleanse us, forgive us, at iligtas po tayo sa ating mga kasalanan. Alam niyo po, every time binabalik na naman po, yung ginawa ng Panginoon sa buhay ko, wala po akong nakikita ni isang katiting na dahilan kung bakit kinagalang ang pamatay ng Diyos para sa akin. And not just for me, but for everyone na nagtiwala po sa ating Panginoon sa Cristo. Amen po ba? Jesus Christ died on the cross, hindi po dahil tayo ay kaibig-ibig. Tignan ngayon katabi mo, mukha bang kaibig-ibig? Parang nakasimangot. Diba? Kaya numiti tayo para maging kaibig-ibig. Ayan. Jesus Christ died on the cross, hindi po dahil cute tayo. Hindi mo may katabi mo, mukha bang cute? Yes. Ha? Hindi na pa tayong pangasok Christo dahil malulungkot siya kung wala tayo. But it's purely because the God whom we serve, whom we worship, He is the God of love. And as Christians, we are called to love one another. I realize that the world will not know that we are Christ's disciples simply because we go to church or we attend CCF. Alam niyo po, ito pong bansa natin is very religious. Almost everybody goes to church. Iba't ibang religion, iba't ibang beliefs, iba't ibang denomination. The world will not know that we are Christ's disciples simply because we nasusol po tayo ng Christian na t-shirt. Tama po ba? Or nakikinig po tayo ng Christian songs. The world will not know that we are Christ's disciples simply because tayo po ay nananalanin. Sino po dito yung nagpe-pray? Alam po ninyo, marami pong tao, kapag nagkakaroon ng problema, all of us natin nagiging prayerful. May kilala ba kayong ganyan? The world will not know that we are Christians or Christ's disciples simply because we attend seminars or retreat. Because the Bible says that all men, ano ba ibig sabihin ng all men? The world, lahat po tayo. All men will know that we are His followers. If, ano ba yung sabi doon? If we have love for one another. Again, what's our message today? Practice radical love. Now, in Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 to 44, in verse 43, sabi rito, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. You shall love your neighbor. Ready ba? Turn to your neighbor. Sabi mo sa kanya, I love you. With the love of the Lord. Ayan. Parang ayaw niyo talagang sabihin na. Mahal niyo mga katabi niyo. Again, I love you with the love of the Lord. Napilitan sila. You have heard that it was said you shall love your neighbor and 
hate your enemy. Now, kailangan maunawaan natin, this verse 43 talks about the human love. Ano po yun? Yan, gising na sila. Human love. Ito po yung pag-ibig ng mundo. Ano po yung human love? Ang human love po ay ganito. I love my family, I love my neighbor, I love my friends. Mahal mo yung mga taong tumutunong sa akin. Mahal mo yung mga taong umiibig sa akin. But, I don't love my enemy. Tama ba? Kapag sinabi mo sa mundo, pinakit niyo nga ng mundo, sinabi mo, alam mo, mahal ko ang aking kaaway. Ano sasabihin nila? Weird. Diba? Napakamartir. But, ayan po yung sinasabi, that's the human love. Pag-ibig po na mundo. But in verse 44, this is the radical love of Jesus. Pasahin po natin. Go. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. This is the radical love of God. Tayo po ay hindi lamang tayo tinawag ng Panginoon para mahali yung mga taong kaibig-ibig. Para mahali yung mga taong nagpapakas natin. But to even love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Alam niyo po, mga kapatid, kung ang mahal lang po natin yung mga taong mahal tayo, wala po tayong pinagkaiba sa mga hindi mananampalataya. Tama po ba? That's why Jesus said, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Again, this is the radical love of Jesus. Two kinds of love. Verse 43, human love, sentimental love, na kung minsan ay nakabase po sa ating emotions. Pag ginawan tayo ng maganda, mahal kita. Kapag ginawan mo ko na hindi maganda, galit ako sa'yo. But verse 44 talks about the radical love of Jesus. Okay. In 1 John chapter 4, 7, and 8, sabi dito, Beloved, let us love one another. Why? For love is from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. According to this verse, Sino daw yung tao na merong tunay na relasyon sa Panginoon? Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Kahit ilang beses mo sabihin, mahal ko ang Panginoon, ay am a Christian. Kung hindi, wala po tayong pag-ibig sa ating kapwa, ano ba yung sinasabi? Hindi po natin kilala ang Diyos. Because in verse 8, sabi nito, The one who does not love does not know God for God is love. So, di mo nga sa atin mo, God is, God is love. How can we claim to love the Lord whom we cannot see if we cannot love people na araw-araw po natin nakikita? God is love and God commanded us to love one another. What kind of people? All kinds of people. Madali po bang mahalin ang ating katabi? Yan, walang sumagot, di ba? Siyempre. Again, madali po bang mahalin ang ating mga katabi? Madali po bang mahalin yung mga tao ang nagbibigay sa atin ng pera? Yes! Di po ba? Madali po bang mahalin yung mga tao na mamutang sa atin na ayaw magbayad? Yes! Madali po bang mahalin yung mga tao na araw-araw ang araw mo bumising, ang ayos ng suot mo, bigla nang uh, papasok ka sa trabaho sa opisina, bigla ko alam sa atin, ikakat ka? Tarap pa ba ng bintana, no? <laughs> Madali po bang mahalin yung mga tao? Hindi po. It's not easy. Sa totoo lang po, to love your enemies, meaning nyo, to love your enemies, to love difficult people, is impossible for us. Apart from Jesus. Naintindihan mo ba natin? Apart from the Lord, it's almost impossible na mahalin mo yung mga difficult people, yung mga tao may ugali, kung tawagin natin, yung tao may attitude. Tama po ba? Hindi may katabi mo, mukha pang may attitude. <laughs> Di ba ba? Hindi ko mahalin, hindi ko madaling mahalin yung mga gantong tao. That's why my prayer in 1 Thessalonians 3, basahin natin, May the Lord cause you to increase and abound in love for one another. And for all people, hindi lang po sa atin, madali po mahalin yung ating ka-church. Tama po ba? Madali po ba mahalin yung tagasisi ang taytay? Yes, di ba? Pero sabi nito, hindi lang yung taga-sisi at tayo ang dapat natin mahalin. Sabi nito, ano sabi nito? And for all people. What kind of people? All kinds of people. people. Difficult people. Unlovable people. Mayaman, mahirap, merong katungkulan, walang katungkulan, nagbibigay ng utos, sumusunod sa utos, malinis, marumi. As Christians, sabi ng Panginoon, we should love all kinds of people. What will happen if we learn to love others radically? In verse 13, 
so that he may establish your hearts without blame in holiness before our God and the Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. If we learn to love others, ano po mayari? We will stand holy and blameless before God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Gusto niyo ba one day kapag umarap tayo sa Panginoon, hiyang-hiya tayo at takot-takot tayo? Or ang gusto po natin is we, is we stand holy and blameless before God. What is the greatest commandment? The greatest commandment is love God and love your neighbors. If we learn to love God and to love our neighbors, then we have fulfilled the law of God. That's why in verse 13, He may establish your hearts without blame in holiness before our God. We will stand holy and blameless before God. What is radical love? Radical love is Luke 6, 27 to 28. Everybody, but I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who mistreat you. This is the radical love of Jesus. Luke 6, 35, but love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for He Himself is kind to ungrateful and evil men. What will happen is if we learn to love others, if we learn to love our enemies. Ano po mangyayari kapag matututunan po natin mahalin, even the difficult people? Number one, your reward will be great. Sino po dito yung gusto magkaroon ng great reward in that kingdom one day? I want to have a great reward. Tama po ba? Number two, you will be sons of the most time. Now, huwag po natin mag-misinterpret. Hindi po hindi sabihin that we need to do certain things to earn our salvation. For salvation is only by the grace of God. It is a gift. Tama po ba? Wala po tayong pwedeng gawin o kahit anong pagsusumigap natin para po tayong naligtas. But yung sinasabi po rito is that when we learn to love others, our sonship will be manifested. Marirecognize tayo ng mundo ang itong tao na ito ay anak to ng Diyos. Alina po ba? And you will bear the image of God. Remember, ano po yung sabi? We are created in the image and likeness of God. Ano po ba yung image and likeness of God? God is love. And if we learn to love others, then we will bear the image of God. Ang ganda po nung sinabi dito, for He Himself, sino po yung He na tinutukal? God. For God Himself is kind to ungrateful and evil men. Aminin po natin sa isang banda sa ating buhay, tayo po ay naging ungrateful and evil man. Inamin po ba natin? Ako po personally, inaamin ko po that I used to be this person. But Jesus said, God Himself is kind to ungrateful and evil man. Kung ang Diyos po ay marunong magpatawa, kung ang Diyos po ay mabuti, even to the ungrateful and evil man, then how much more? na dapat tayo rin po ang higigin din natin. Yung ganito pong mga tao sa akin. What's our message today? Practice radical love. Okay. This is the letter of the Ugnetus. Siya po ay isang hindi mana ng palataya. But this is how we used to describe the early Christian church. Sabi dito, Christians are not distinguished from the rest of humanity by country, language, or custom. At the same time, they demonstrate the remarkable and admittedly unusual character of their own citizenship. They live on earth, but their citizenship is in heaven. Ito, ito po ay reminder sa atin na ito pong mundong ginagalawa natin is just our temporary dwelling place. Ang citizenship po natin is in heaven. We will spend siguro 50, 60, 70, 80 years on earth, but after that, we will spend eternity in Christ. Kaya sabi dito, their citizenship is heaven. Ano pa po? They observe the established laws. Indeed, in their private lives, they transcend the laws. They love everyone. And by everyone, they are persecuted. They are poor, yet they make many rich. They are in need of everything, yet they abound in everything. They are cursed, yet they bless. They are insulted, yet they offer respect. Those who hate them are unable to give a reason for their hostility. Ano po yung nakikita natin dito? Sila po ay na-describe as group of people who love others. All kinds of people. Sabi dito, they love everyone. I realize that if we will learn to love others, at ito po ay makikita ng mundo, 
I believe that we will be an effective witness of Jesus. Tama po ba? Do you want to be an effective witness of the Lord? Amen. Then the secret is to learn how to love others. Learn to love all kinds of people. Difficult people, unlovable people, rich, poor, we should love all kinds of people. In John chapter 13, 34 to 35, ready ko po bang hilingin na sabay-sabay natin basahin? Go! A new commandment I give you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, so that you also love one another. Okay? A new commandment I give you, love one another. At ang maganda po, sabi nga dito sa verse 35, By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Again, ito po yung kanina sinasabi nga, that the world will not know that we are Christ's disciples simply because we do certain things. Because the Bible says, all men will know that we are Christ's disciples if we have love for one another. Paano daw po tayo marirecognize as mga anak ng Diyos? Kung meron daw po tayong pag-ibig sa isa't isa. Again, our message today is practice radical love. Now, to practice radical love, I want you to remember three things. Ilang bagay? Tatlo. Ulitin ko lang. To practice radical love, tandaan po natin yung tatlong bagay. Ano po yung tatlong bagay niyan? Are we ready? Okay. Number one, people. Number two, action. And number three, pursue. Again, what are the three things to remember to practice radical love? Go. People, action, pursuit. One more time. People, action, pursuit. Okay, isin natin. Ano po yung tatlong bagay na dapat natin alalahanin to practice radical love? Go. People, action, pursuit. Very good. Kailangan kasi natin ito later. Kaya ako pinamemorize. People, action, and pursuit. Number one, God commanded us to love people. Hindi po tayo tinawag ng Diyos para mahalin ang mga Bagay. Or to love money. Sabi nga, the love of money is the root of all evil. Okay? So, God told us to love people. What kind of people? All kinds of people. Mayaman, mahirap, may katungkulan, walang katungkulan. We should love all kinds of people. Can you imagine kung ang minamahal po natin ay bagay? For example, no, mahal na mahal po itong lapel na ito. Lahat ay gagawin ko para sa may na ito. Hindi po. Tayo po ay tinawag ng Diyos upang mahalin po ang Tao. We are commanded to love people. You know why? Because God is love and God loves people. Tama po ba? And if we will love others, then God will be peace. Pangalawa, ano po yung sabi rito? Action. Love takes action. Sabi mo nga, action? Ang pag-ibig po ay merong action. Okay? If in your mind, sinasabi mo sa isip mo, alam mo, mahal na mahal ko itong asawa ko na ito. Mahal na mahal ko ito. Mahal na mahal ko ito. Pero kung wala kang ginagawang aksyon, then paano po malalaman ang ating asawa na mahal natin siya? Tama po ba? So again, to practice radical love, we should love all kinds of people. Asama ba yung katabi niyo? Yes. Whether you like it or not. Pangalawa, love takes action. Dapat merong gawin. Gawa. Sabi mo nga, gawa. For God so loved the world. Ano yung ginawa ni Lord? He gave His Son. That's the radical love of God. For God so loved the world, He gave His Son, Jesus, to die for us. Whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And number three, to practice radical love, we need to pursue. What do you mean pursue? Real love does not easily give up. Love is patient. Love is kind. Hindi po basta-basta sumusuko. And God's love is pursuing. Tama mo ba? So kung ang radical love is we need to pursue. Okay? Again, what are the three things to practice radical love? To remember, people, action, pursue. Ano niyo po? Naalala ko po yung isang uh, favorite ko na uh, worship uh, songs. The title is, uh, Your Love Never Fails. Basahin mo natin, sabi nito, Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out of Alam mo ba natin ang awitin? Awitin po natin. Go! Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. One more time. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Go! Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. Amen! Na, napakaganda po ng awitin ng pagkakas. 
pag-ibig po ng Diyos ay never fails, never gives up, and never runs out. Alam niyo po ang amin nito, sometimes ang pag-ibig ko po sa Diyos ay nag-fail. Sometimes ang pag-ibig ko po sa tao ay nag-fail. But what's amazing is the radical love of God is love never fails, never gives up, never runs out. Alam niyo po kung nag-fail ang pag-ibig ng Diyos, kung nag-give up ang Panginoon sa buhay ko, then I don't think I need to go up man. That's why I really praise God. And I think all of us should really praise God because His love for us never fails, never gives up, never runs out. Amen? Walang pa naman natin si Lord. Mas malabas pa yan. Amen. So right now, we're going to look in the book of Jonah. Ano pong libro? Jonah. Titignan po natin yung pag-ibig ng Diyos na hindi nag-fail, na hindi sumusuko, at hindi nabubos. Again, if you have your Bibles, turn to Jonah chapter 1. Ready na po ba tayo? The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. The word of the Lord came to Jonah. Sino ba si Jonah? Jonah is God's servant. He is a prophet. Kung iraraling natin siya sa panahon natin, pwede ba natin siya tawagin pastor? O sige, si Pastor Jonah. Now, normally, dahil siya ay servant ng Panginoon, meron pinapagawa ang Lord sa kanya. Ano yung pinapagawa ni Lord? Sabi niya, Jonah, arise, go to Nineveh, and cry against him or preach the good news so that people may repent and turn away from their wicked deeds. For their wickedness has come up before me. Again, what are the three things to remember to practice what the Lord? Number one is, O, oh, dyan lang muna tayo. Love all kinds of? Ano pong klaseng tao yung Nineveh? Yung Ninevites. They are wicked. Kaya sabi ng Panginoon, their wickedness has come up before me. Nineveh is the capital of Assyria. At ito pong mga Assyrians, they are known for their cruelty. Very cruel po sila. Kaya nasabi ng Panginoon, their wickedness has come up before me. These are wicked men. Ngunit sa kabila po ng kanilang pagiging makasalanan, ano pong ginawa ng Diyos? Pinili pa rin silang ibigin at mahalin ng Panginoon. Again, radical love is loving difficult people. Tama mo ba? Ano yung radical love? Loving difficult people. Sabi mo sa atabi mo, radical love means loving difficult people like me. Go! Loving difficult people like me. Yan, very good. Sino ba si Jonah? Jonah is a historical man. He is recorded in 2nd Kings. Sabi dito, he restored the border of Israel from the entrance of Hamad as far as the Sea of Arabah, according to the word of the Lord, the God of Israel, which he spoke through his servant, Jonah, the son of Amittai, the prophet, who was of God at So si Jonah po is, according to this verse, a servant of the Lord. Kung buhay si Jonah ngayon, siya po ay servant ng Panginoon, he is a minister, he is a prophet, o siguro pwede natin siyang tawagin pastor. Ako po ba? Nakakasunod po ba tayo? Malino po ba? Okay, ano po yung ginawa ni Jonah? Ano po yung command ng Panginoon? Arise. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, arise. Gising na. Arise. Di ba? Go to Nineveh and preach. Now, tignan po natin. Sinunod po ba ni Jonah si Lord o hindi? So, familiar tayo sa story. Basahin natin. In Jonah 1, 3, go. But Jonah rose up to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So he went down to Joppa, found a ship, which was going to Tarshish, paid the fare, and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. In other words, nagdi-disobey po si Jonah sa Panginoon. Ano ginagawa ni Jonah? Nagdi-disobey. Sino ba yung nagdi-disobey kay Lord sa ngayon? Huwag natin itasang ating mga kamay. Di po ba? Jonah was running away from God. If you want to, alam niyo po yung mga tao tumatakbo po sa Diyos, they don't think straight. Hindi po sila nakikipag-ship ng tama. Kaya sabi nito, Jonah rose up to flee from the presence of the Lord. Now, is it possible for anyone to flee from the presence of God? Hindi po. Kahit saan sunong po tayo ng mundo magpunta, God is everywhere. Ano ba? Pangalawa, if you want to run away from God, there will always be opportunities available. Bakit ko po nasabi yun? Tignan po natin. Jonah, gusto niya lumayo. Ayaw niya sumunod sa utos ng Panginoon. He was running away from God. So, he went down to Joppa. Tam lugar? Joppa. At ano nakita niya? He found a ship. Opportunity number one. May barko. And that was going to Tarshish. 
Again, opportunity. Yung Tarshish po is the opposite direction of Lilide. Malayo po yung Tarshish. And, ano ginawa niya? He paid the fare. Now, kailangan natin maunuan, magastos po yung journey papunta sa Tarshish. Because Tarshish is 2,000 miles away from Israel. At yung biyahe nila, pwede pong abutin na may dito po lang isang taon. So, magastos yung pamasahe. Pero anong nangyari? Jonah paid the fare. Again, meron siyang pera pang bayad. Opportunity number three. Ano pa po? Yung weather po is okay. Kasi kung hindi okay yung panahon, hindi po sila makakaalis. Again, opportunity number four. If you are, if you want to run away from God, if you want to disobey God, lagi po may opportunities na available. But I want to remind everybody, we are free, sabi mo, we are free to make choices. But we are not free to escape the consequences of our Wrong choices. Malaya po tayong piliin natin kung gusto natin mag-disobey sa Panginoon, tumakbo palayo sa Diyos, but we are not free to escape the consequences. Again, Jonah was running away from God, nag-disobey siya sa Panginoon. Just to show you the map, ito po yung Israel, and Nineveh is about 500 miles away, but si Jonah po, siya po ay papunta sa Tarshish. He was running away from the Lord. And in Jonah chapter 1 verse 4, basahin nga po natin, kabay sa Bible, The Lord brought a great wind on the sea, and there was a great storm on the sea, so that the ship was about to break up. All of us sa atin nagkaroon ng napakalakas na bagyo. Now, hindi po natin alam kung gano'ng katagal na naglalakbay si Jonah papunta sa Tarshish. Tama po ba? So sabihin na natin isang buwan na. Can you imagine, in Jonah's mind, pag sakay niya ng barko, no consequence. Tama po ba? Habang bumabiyahe siya, isang linggo, dalawang linggo, tatlong linggo, walang nangyayari. So in Jonah's mind, nakalusot ako, successful, natakasan ko ang Diyos. Tama po ba? No consequence. Then all of a sudden, in verse 4, makikita po natin that there was a great storm on the sea at sobrang lakas po nung bagyo, halos mawasak yung parto. Again, to practice radical love, God loves all kinds of Love takes action and God's love is pursuing. So, dito po is pinapersonal ng Panginoon ng pag-ibig ng Diyos, si Jonah. Sa pamamagitan po ng bagyo. And maybe some of you are running away from the Lord right now and you have no peace in your heart. Merong bagyo sa iyong puso. Maybe God is telling you to cut a relationship that is not pleasing to the Lord but you are running away from God. Parahin yung iba naman sa inyo ay uh, God is telling you to forgive but you don't want, you're running away from the Lord. Walang kapayapaan sa iyong puso, there's a storm in your heart. Or marahin yung iba naman sa God is telling you, make disciples. Matagal ka ng Christian, why don't you start your own group but you're running away from the Lord. I hope na hindi po natin hintayin yung bagyo sa ating buhay before we decide that this time I will follow the Lord. Are you with me? Huwag po nawa natin hintayin na magpadala pa ng bagyo ang Panginoon bago natin sasabihin, sige na nga, susunod na ako sa Diyos. Alam mo, if you are really a child of God, even if you try to run away from the Lord, you will not be able to. Because God's love is pursuing. Ahabulin at ahabulin tayo ng pag-ibig ng Panginoon and nothing will separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Kaya kung anak ka ng Diyos, at kahit pinitin mo tumakbo pala yun sa Diyos, ahabulin at ahabulin ka ng Panginoon. Remember, in Hebrews 12, 6, For those whom the Lord loves, He disciplines and He scourges every son whom He receives. So kung ikaw ay anak ng Diyos, and you're running away from the Lord, expect that there will be a discipline. Sino po rin kayo gusto ng discipline? Kapag tayo po ay tumatakbo palayo sa Diyos, expect that God will discipline us. Tama po ba? Because He scourges every son who may receive. So kung tumatakbo ka sa Diyos, nandidisobay ka sa Panginoon, and right now walang consequence, ano po ibig sabihin nun? Wait ka lang. Then for sure, darating yung discipline ng Panginoon. Kung anak ka ng Diyos. Because God is faithful. Yun po yung sinabi ng Panginoon in Hebrews 12.6. Kaya ito po nakakatakot. Ang nakakatakot, yung gawa ka ng gawa ng kasama, at walang nangyayari. Marahin hindi ka anak ng Diyos. For Hebrews 12.6, again, for those whom the Lord loves, He disciplines. And He scourges every son whom He 
receives. Ano pong mangyayari sa anak ng Diyos na tumatakbo pala yun sa Diyos? Letter D. Ano po yan? Discipline. Okay? Now, let's go back to Jonah. In, in Jonah 1.5, ano po sa atin? Then the sailors became afraid and every man cried to his God, small g. And they threw the cargo which was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. Ano pong ginagawa ni Jonah habang yung mga sailors po ay umiyak, nagkakagulo, nag takot na takot si Jonah na ginagawa niya. Basahin natin, go. But Jonah had gone below into the hold of the ship, laying down and falling sound asleep. Habang ang lahat ay takot na takot at papanik, umiyak, si Jonah po ay umihilik. Tulog na tulog po si Jonah. Alam niyo po, bakit kaya natutulog si Jonah? Yung kanyang pagtulog po is a picture of his spiritual condition. He was insensitive. Isa po sa symptoms na mga taong lumalayo sa Panginoon ay ang kawala ng pakialam sa kapwa. Tama ba? Wala siyang pakialam kung pamatay itong mga sailors na ito dahil sa malakas na bagyo and worst of all, to die without Jesus. Alam po niya na ito po mga sailors ay hindi pa mana ng paradaya. But here is Jonah, tulog na tulog. Again, that's the picture of his spiritual condition. Siya po ay insensitive. Siya po ay walang pakialam. Now, let's continue. So the captain approached him and said, How is it that you are sleeping? Get up, hold on your God. Perhaps your God will be concerned about us so that we will not perish. So ano po nangyari? God used a pagan captain to rebuke Jonah. Gusto ng Diyos na magising si Jonah sa katotohanan. Bakit? Siya po ay tumatak po sa Diyos. So God used a captain, a pagan captain, to rebuke, rebuke Jonah. Alam niyo po, isa po, one of the worst things that can happen to a believer is to be rebuked by unbelievers. Gusto po ng Diyos na magising si Jonah sa katotohanan. Ano nangyari? Nagising po kaya si Jonah? Masahin natin. Each man said to his mate, Come, let us cast lots, so we may learn on whose account this calamity has struck us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on, kanino po? Jonah. Now in Jonah's mind, sabi niya siguro, walang nakakaalam, walang nakakaalam, and then all of a sudden, they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, Tell us now, on whose account has this calamity struck us? What is your occupation? Ininterrogate na siya. And where do you come from? What is your country from? What people are you? Now, can you just imagine, kung ikaw si Jonah, at tinatanong ka, ano na nangyari? What is your occupation? Ano nga ba yung occupation ni Jonah? Siya po ay servant ng Panginoon. Again, ginigising siya ng Panginoon. God's love is pursuing him and reminding him kung sino siya. His identity in Christ. What is your occupation? And then finally, ito po yung naging tugon ni Jonah. He said to them, I am a Hebrew and I fear the Lord, Yahweh, God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. In other words, ang sinasabi po ni Jonah is, I worship the one who God. Sino ba yung may worship ni Jonah? Isip pa po ba tayo? Okay. I worship the one who God. Yung mga sailors, they worship their, their gods, small g. Diyos ng araw, Diyos ng between, Diyos ng dagat, iba't ibang Diyos. Kamantala dito sabi ni Jonah, nung tinatanong siya, sino ka? What is your occupation? And finally he said, I fear the Lord, God of heaven, who made us in I worship the one true God. After sabihin ni Jonah that I worship the one true God, ano po kaya yung naging reaction ng mga sailors? Are you ready? Ito po yung kinakalang naging reaction. Then the man became extremely frightened and they said to him, ano yung sabi? How could you do this? Sabi mo sa atin mo, how could you do this? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Nung nalaman mo ng mga sailors na si Jonah ay sumasamba sa isang buhay at totoong Diyos, ano yung tanong nila kay Jonah? How could you do this? If you really worship the one true God, then how could you do this? Alam niyo po, sometimes, unbelievers are shocked with our actions. Because we're doing the things that we're not supposed to. How would you do this? Kung sinasamba mo, if you really know the one true God, then how could you do this? So, ano pong ginawa nila? They said to him, to Jonah, what should we do that the sea may become calm for us? For the sea was, ano po nangyari? Becoming increasingly Stormy, lalong lumalakas yung 
bagyo. Again, kung anak ka ng Diyos at lumayo ka sa Panginoon, anong gagawin ng Panginoon? He will, letter D, discipline. Because God's love will pursue you. If you run away from God first, magpapadala ang Panginoon ng bagyo. Signal number one. Kapag matigas pa rin ang iyong ulo, ano mangyayari? For the sea was becoming increasingly stormy. Stormy. Signal number two. Okay, pagpatuloy po natin. Now, ito nakakalukod po na part kay Jonah. Ano sinabi ni Jonah? Basahin po natin in Jonah 1.12. He said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will become calm for you. For I know that on account of me, this great storm has come upon me. Imagine for a moment si Jonah. Paano siya dumating sa point? Tagalogin natin. Sabi ni Jonah, itapon niyo na lang ako. Dahil alam ko na ang lahat ng ito ay kagagawan ko. Now, para sabihin ito ni Jonah, para in his mind, I deserve to die. God is finished with me. Tapos na ang Diyos sa buhay ko, I disobey God, ako ito makukalayo sa Diyos, therefore, wala na akong pag-asa. Kaya sabi ni Jonah, itapon niyo na lang I love what Pastor Peter Tanchi said. Sabi niya, you may run, you may hide, but you cannot outrun God. Mga kaibigan, dalawang lugar lang, dalawang direksyon lang ang pwede po natin puntahan sa buhay natin sa oras na ito. Ano po yung dalawang direksyon na yan? Number one is Tarshish. Are you headed for Tarshish? You're running away from God's will? Or number two, Tutinibe. It means, na sumusunod po tayo sa Panginoon. Kung tayo po ay pipili, ano po yung ating pipili? May I suggest, stop running away from God. Instead, ano po yung dapat natin gawin? We should trust and obey. Again, what's our message today? Practice radical love. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, practice radical love. Do you believe in the law of gravity? Kapag ikang isang tao ay tumalon sa tuktok ng bilhin, ang mangyari? Patay, lasog-lasog. Because the law of gravity will apply to him. How about the law of fire? What will happen if you touch the fire? Masusunod ka. Tama ko ba? Mas masaktan ka. Because the law of fire will apply to you. How about the laws of God? What will happen if we violate God's laws? Masasaktan ko ka. We will suffer. Sino ba yung nag-design ng batas ng Diyos? God designed His laws. And we cannot change that. Hindi po natin kaya ang baguhin yun. But you know what? The good news is, God designed His laws na kapag sinunod po natin ang batas ng Panginoon, it will bless you. It will protect you. Tama po ba? But if we violate His laws, then we will suffer the consequences of our wrong choices. Masahin natin. The cost of obedience is nothing compared to the cost of of this obedience. In Jonah 1.13, however, the men rode desperately to return to land, but they could not. For the sea was becoming even stormier against them. Again, kapag matigas ang ulo mo, una, signal number one. Pangalawa, signal number two. Pangatlo, signal number three. I hope na huwag po natin hintayin yung signal number two and three bago po natin sabihin that this time, I will follow the Lord. Tama po ba? Huwag po natin hintayin yung unnecessary pain sa buhay natin bago tayo mag-decide na sumunod sa Panginoon. I love what C.S. Lewis said. Sabi niya, pain insists on being attended to. God whispers to us in our pleasures, speaks in our consciences, but shouts in our pains. It is His megaphone to rouse a deaf world. Bakit po tayo may pain? Sometimes, God allows pain for us to listen. I know someone who's been running away from the Lord for many years, no consequence. Parang niya, walang problema, everything is okay. Then all of a sudden, may garoon po siya ng sakit. And this sickness is lifetime. Then every day, kailangan niya mag-endure sa pain ng dahil sa sakit na yan. Again, huwag po nawa natin hintayin ang pain before we say that this time, I will follow the Lord. So in Jonah for verse one, chapter 1, verse 14, Then they called on the Lord and said, Ano po yung sabi ng mga sailors? We earnestly pray, O Lord, do not let us perish on account of this one month's life, and do not put innocent blood on us. For you, O Lord, 
of God what you have. Ano sabi ni Jonah? Itapon nyo na lang ako. At kagagawa ko ito. Ano nangyari? Basahin natin. So they pick up Jonah, threw him into the sea, and the sea stopped its raging. Finally, nakakaawan Jonah. Ano kong ginawa kay Jonah? Itinapon ko sa hindi lang pa sa dagat, napakalakas ng bagyo. Gusto mo bang maitapon sa dagat? Ha? Don't run away from God. Ano po yung nangyari? Tinapon po siya sa dagat. But notice, ito po yung radical love ng Panginoon. Hindi lang mahal ng Panginoon si Jonah. God loves even the sailors. Tama po ba? They pick up Jonah, threw him into the sea. Ano po nangyari? Pagtapon kay Jonah. The sea stopped its raging. Ulitin ko lang. The sea stopped It's raging. Can you imagine? Ito pong mga pagan sailors na ito, they have witnessed the power of the one true God. Ginamit po ng Diyos si Jonah at yung sitwasyon ni Jonah to even reveal himself to this pagan sailors. That's the radical love of God. All kinds of people. Hindi lang yung servant niya na si Jonah, but even pagan sailors. So ano pong nangyari sa sailors na ito? Then the men feared the Lord greatly, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. They have witnessed the power of the one through God. And there's a possibility na marahin nito mga sailors na ito ay na-experience po nila at nakilala nila ang ating kakilang Diyos. That's the radical love of Jesus. What's our message today? Practice radical love. Now, so right now, you know, we are so blessed because we're going to hear a testimony. Ito po itong uh, patutuo ng ating kapatid na kung saan siya po ay nakaranas ng radical love ng pag-ibig ng Panginoon sa Christ. And part of that radical love is a storm if we will not obey. Again, let us all welcome our brother in Christ, Mr. Johnny King. Good morning. My name is Johnny King Jr., 40 years old, a husband and a father of four kids. When I reached high school, I was influenced to join a fraternity and started taking marijuana. I hung out with the wrong set of friends and learned to misbehave and get into vices. I started using meth, shabu, gambling, drinking alcohol, and got involved in gang fights. I hid everything from my parents at home. I pretended to be a good son, but outside, my life was a mess. During my college days, my addiction to meth got worse. I lost control of myself. I would even resort of stealing from my parents. I started doing illegal activities that forced my father to tell me to move out of our house. I moved out and stayed in a pub house where I was introduced to some pushers. Eventually, I became a pusher myself. I was desolate in my own bad habits. When my parents learned about all this, they took me home and gave me another chance. I went back to college and graduated. A note to my parents, I was still doing drugs after graduation. My drug addiction and vices became worse. I also got involved with two women at the same time and got both of them pregnant. I had a job at the time and I thought everything was okay. I thought I would find contentment when I got married. But I stayed away again and went back into vices, drugs, womanizing, and barcada. When my father passed away in 2009, he left me enough inheritance and a business for me to manage. It was when I got really worse. I wanted everything my way. I mistreated my siblings and disrespected my mother. I mistreated my wife, abusing her emotionally, mentally, and physically. I even threatened to kill her. I became a very violent person, carrying guns because of paranoia. My family became so distant and did not know how to handle me anymore. My kids were traumatized because of all that I did. One day, my family decided to end my drug addiction. With the help of PIDEA, they forced to send me a therapeutic community rehab center in Batangas City. The life in that rehab was too much to bear. I felt so alone. It was when I hit rock bottom. 
And I slowly learned to be honest before God and ask Him questions like, Are you real? I know you, but I don't really know if you really exist. For almost two years inside that rehab, every day was a struggle. I learned to surrender all my pain and hardship to Him. Eventually, my mother decided to pull me out of the rehab and transfer me to Penwell home. But she told me that my wife and kids were planning to leave me and that I have to be ready to accept that my wife no longer loved me. It was a hard blow on me, one of the lowest points of my life, but I said to myself, if it's this my pain, I need to face it. In Penwell home, I feel accepted. It was where I was encouraged to get to know God. At first, I was not really interested in reading the Bible. But with the four days of reading the Bible, it was interesting that I would always end up to Galatians 2 verse 20. I have been crucified, crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. This verse really touched me and moved to talk to God every day. I experienced God's grace during my stay in Penwell. In answer to my prayers, my wife and kids started visiting me. From then on, I continued reading the Bible and attending CCF service with my family. God's love was slowly doing its work in me and my family. My marriage and my family relationship were restored until I graduated from Penwell home. My wife and I also joined a small group when we both grew spiritually. By the grace of God, I'm already handling my own small group. I'm also privileged to serve my fellow brothers in Penwell Home by sharing devotion as part of the recovery program. I also share devotion inside the city jail every week. By God's grace, I was assigned by Pastor Danilo or Kiko as an overseer of CCF Biahe of Binigyang Layan Jesus Jail Ministry and one of the CPAC coordinator in San Juan City. Truly, the Lord can use mess up people like me to tell others the good news about our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, my name is Johnny King Jr., a slave of drug addiction for 20 years. Now my chains are gone, have been set free by the radical love of God. To him be all the glory forever and ever. Were you blessed? Yes. God be the glory. Okay, palakpakan natin ang Lord sa buhay ng ating kapatid. Praise God in him. That's the radical love of Jesus. One of the three things to remember to practice radical love. Number one, we got to love all kinds of Danny used to be a drug addict for how many years? 20 years. Pero pinili pa rin siyang mahalin na Panginoon. Love takes letter A. Action. Ano yung action ng Panginoon? Pindala po siya sa iba't ibang rehabilitation. Madali po ba sa loob ng rehab, Brother Danny? Hindi po madali. And again, God's love is pursuing. Nahabulin ka at nahabulin ang pag-ibig. Ng Isa pa po sa radical love ng Panginoon sa buhay ni Johnny. This is why. Can you imagine? Napakaganda po ng kanyang asawa. And sa loob ng dalawang puntong pagkulong ni Johnny, hindi po siya iniwanan. Amen? That's the radical love of Jesus. And right now, God is using him mightily. Finally, si Johnny po ay nasa mini dena. Okay? He is no longer headed for Tarsus. He is now doing what God wants him to do. That's why Johnny is so blessed. Blessed po ang kanyang pamilya. Because if you obey God, God will bless you. If we disobey God, we will experience unnecessary pain in our lives. Again, that's the radical love of Jesus. Now, going back to Jonah, ano po yung nangyari kay Jonah? Siya po ba ay namatay? Hindi po. And the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the stomach of the fish three days and three nights. For those who are running away from the Lord, gusto niyo po ba na malunok ng isda? Di Johnny, ilang isda ang lumunok rehabilitation facility. Huwag po natin hintayin. Okay? So ano po nangyari? And finally, in Jonah 2.1, Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the Saan po nag-pray si Jonah? Sa loob na? Hindi siya nag-pray doon sa barko. Hindi siya nag-pray sa tubig. Saan siya nag-pray? 
Sa loob na, tiyan na, ikaw ba naman, nasa loob na lang tiyan ng isla, hindi ka po ba naman mag-pray? <laughs> hindi po ba? Again, I hope na hindi po natin hintayin yung signal number one, signal number two, signal number two, before we decide to follow the Lord. And then, alam po natin yung story, God commanded the fish to vomit Jonah to dry land, and this time, anong ginawa ni Jonah? Foreigner na siya. This time, Jonah obeyed God and went to Nineveh. Finally, pinunod niya na ang Panginoon because God's love is pursuing. Radical love means love all kinds of people. Difficult people, unlovable people, all kinds of people. Radical love means uh, love takes action. Tama nyo? Love does not easily give up. In Romans 8.35, Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Everybody, bas- basahin po natin yung last verse. Go, for I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor death nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? Nothing will separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. What's our message today? Practice radical love. Tayo po natin yung mukha. Tayo po yung